So this is what we're looking for in, in a breach report. We have a, we have a form on our site that, that sets all this out so you don't have to remember it or anything. But ultimately what we're looking for is an understanding of the breach and an understanding of what you've done about it. Um, That'll come into that'll come into play in a couple slides of, of why we want to know what you've done about it. But again, we're looking for essentially what happened, when did it when did it happen, what types of PI are involved, um, how many people were involved, because this breach these breach reporting requirements apply whether it's a, a breach of one person's information or a million people's information. Um, and again, then there's the steps taken to reduce mitigate harm. And a contact person at your organization that we can that we can use to you know, ask any follow-up questions about this report. And then when you're, when you're notifying individuals, it's largely the same: it's a description of the circumstances, um, the period of the breach, what you what you've done to re uh, reduce or mitigate the harm, what the individual can do to um, to further mitigate harm if there are any steps that they that they're able to take, and again, contact inform contact information if if they. Can And so, that, you know, what happens when we, when we receive these breaches? Um, you're required to, required to provide, the, um, provide the report to us and to, and to individuals as, as soon as feasible. Um, we, we recognize for, for significantly large breaches that, you know, reporting to the regulator is going to be a, a quicker process than, than notifying, you know, 10,000 uh, 10, individuals. Um, but again, it's, it's the, the notification requirement is as soon as feasible, and it's it's acceptable if you don't have all in from all the information that uh, that was that was set out, or if new information comes to um, uh, new information arises that you need to that you need to amend to, to the initial report. That's that's fine. Um, that there's that, that, that permitted in the legislation, um, and then. We take a graduated, a graduated approach when we uh, when we receive these breaches, uh, the breach reports. So when we get complaints, so outside of, outside of the breach context, when we get complaints, there, there's a requirement that the OPC, um, the OPC open an investigation and, and investigate and investigate any complaints uh, that we receive. It's part of part of the legislation. That doesn't that that same requirement doesn't exist for. Breach reports. So it gives us a lot more flex. It gives us a lot more flexibility. So, again, if we receive a, if we receive a report and an organization has made clear that you know this this appears to be a one this appears to be a one off thing, um, you've, you've taken you've taken the appropriate steps to mitigate the harm. There's there's no evidence that this is you know some kind of systemic failure that's going to come up over and over again. Um, then you know. Our, our practice is uh, we're, we're completely able and, and quite often do essentially say, you know, thank you, we may ask a couple follow-up questions, but it, it's thank you, file that away, and then we don't take any further action. Um, for, for, for larger breaches or for breaches where there's kind of questions about, about what's going on, we can open a, a, a structured dialogue with organizations as well, and just, again, that's, you know, a voluntary process where we're trying to work with work with the organization to make sure that something like this isn't going to happen again. That that the appropriate um, the appropriate protections are in place for for the future. Um, so it's only it's only in we'll say egregious uh, egregious situations that we're going to go all the way to to initiating investigations. Um, we have to understand that we we are. Resource limited organization as well. We, we expect that we, we receive about 100 breach reports a year. We we expect that that will at minimum triple. Um, we, we actually have no idea how high it's going how high it's going to go when, when these kind of um, requirements came in, in in the UK. They went they they got about a thousand reports in the first month of, of breaches. So again, we, we don't know what, the, what, what level we're going to have, and we have two, two to three dedicated people to, to doing these responses at the moment. 
and we, we weren't provided any additional funds to, to address these uh, to address these breach reports. So again, that's that's not to say be cavalier about this, but it's just to kind of say realistically, your experience with the OBC, if you've taken all the right all the right steps, if you can kind of establish to us that you are um, a responsible organization. We're probably not going to pursue this any farther. That, that's just not, it's not worth our time. Question. Yeah. Okay, so somebody steals my notebook computer out of my car. It's encrypted. Like most of the guys in here, we're all a one man show. Yep. Do I bother calling you guys? Yes. Why? To <laughs> waste my time, to waste your time, I've got an encrypted computer. Nobody's getting at the information. So, okay. So, if you have, if you, again, if you have, an, if you have an encrypted computer, and there, there's, you can kind of establish that there's, you know, it's it's unlikely that anybody's going to be going to be um, access, accessing that information. <coughs> then you haven't. Then you know, there there isn't a real risk of significant harm. So that's that, that's the threshold for reporting. So if, if you have if if you do have that that protection in place. People aren't going to be able to use the information. Um, then, right there, there's there's a record that would need to be kept of that in, internally, but it, it's not a it's not a reportable breach. It's so I gotta go through the motions to get my name on a list just because some asshole broke into my car. <laughs> you yep. realize it's not the people who have absolutely no faith in the federal government. Yep. Okay, uh, I know a lot of guys here who want to say that, I really don't care. I tell them not to stand in the United States and the Caribbean Islands. And to be honest with you, the last thing anybody wants is their name put on a piece of paper in a computer associated with any government program. Yep. Whether it be Revenue Canada, our governing bodies of any type. And so now we actually are turning ourselves in, which is absolutely something that is absolutely terrifying to every individual who is self-employed in this country. So what we're so we're not companies, we're not corporations. We're one man sitting on a chair, and the, the, the attitude is the government will rip the chair out from underneath us because we don't have the funds to fight back. And I think that's something Can most of you guys have, have put up the, the notes here. We need some reinsurance that we're going to be somehow helped through these things, not victimized because we don't have a million dollars. It's nice that all these gov government programs are kicking into place for these big breaches. We don't have the money for resources looking. All we can do is the first thing, buy a computer, go to Staples, buy an empty encryption program, or have an IT guy put it on for us. That's really all we can do. That's, that's the ability of our financial resources. We don't have huge pockets. Well, can I just speak to this? Because I have, a, I have an IT background before I was in this industry. And fortunately for me, my dealer agency on the IROC side is really leading the industry as far as this is concerned. So I want to simplify things because I can, I can feel in some of you the stress levels going up. Okay, so here's the thing. Encrypt your laptop. Encrypt your phone. Okay, because... As Vince said, if you have encrypted devices, there's no need. You make a report at home, there's no need to report it because it's an encrypted device. Am I right? Right. Okay. So that eliminates having, having to worry about a data breach. If you have a USB key, never put client data on a USB key. It's too easily lost. Uh, there are ways to use the cloud in an encrypted format to transfer data if you have to do that. Never use a key. Good rule of thumb, even if it's encrypted. Okay? So encrypt your phone. Encrypt your laptop. Who knows how to encrypt their phone or laptop? Put your phone, put your hand up. Okay, that's what I expected. So what you need to do is you need to contact your dealer agency, be it on the insurance side or on the, on the investment side, because that's who you'll be contacting to, tell that the, to, to, to notify there's a breach. And your compliance people should be able to suggest ways to work with your IT system to, to, to ensure compliance. And what I mean by that is we are adopting Office 365, for instance, because of the encryption level in Office 365 in our, in our in, I'm, I'm with Align Capital Partners, 
and we're adopting that on that side. So I'm doing that on my devices as well. My devices are all encrypted. You have nothing to worry about. Yes, it's a difficult thing to understand if you're not an IT person, but there are lots of IT people out there who have a compliance department, so don't let your stress levels go through the roof. What you need to do when you go home this week is call your, call your compliance department and say, what do we have in place and what do I need to get in place? Because this is new, okay? As much as I appreciate that some people had bad experiences here in Canada, uh, some of us, we haven't. I'm quite confident in the system here. And I think it's unfortunate that we don't all have the same kind of experience, but mm. I have to speak in behalf of my personal experience. I'm very happy here. Yes, and, and thank you. And, and I'll just add, Vance is our friend, okay? <laughs> because the last thing you want as a dealer they're putting, they're putting uh, a, a, a framework in place. The last thing you want in, as a dealer is your name on the front page of a newspaper saying that you allow 200 people's data to get out. If you're in a small town, that's the last thing that small town paper needs to put about you. It's so easy to do. You just have to seek the advice of your compliance department. If they don't know, if they give you a blank stare, maybe you should look at a different dealer agency, frankly. But this is the most important thing to your business down the long run that you can consider right now. This is huge and it's easy to solve. Okay, so Vance is not the enemy, Vance is our friend. That government agency is our friend because they are protecting your data and this will help secure things. Now, you're not Equifax, but nobody's trying to physically get into your computer. The North Koreans don't care about my clients. Okay, let's be serious. Okay. <clears throat> so protect your devices, encrypt your devices, encrypt the data on your devices. It's very easy to do once you understand how to do it. Your compliance department should be So don't let your stress level go up. Vance has given you the framework. I just wanted to put that in there because I, I, you know, there's a lot of questions about stuff that Vance has nothing to do with or his department. So let's just like, keep it focused on he's here to help. This is here to help us, okay? George, can you make a point to the audience that there's a difference between software encryption and hardware? Yes, so there is a difference between... Hardware level? Yes. Hardware level Absolutely. is the only thing that protects it. Right. Make sure that your laptop is encrypted. The pipeline's important, right? Use Office 365, it's got great encryption. It's out there, it's 10 bucks a month, just pay it. It's, it's not worth screwing around. And encrypt your devices, your phone, your laptop. It's really easy to do. Uh, I've got a software application that keeps all of my passwords in one spot. I put one password in, it controls everything for me. Just do it. Just do it. It's, it's that simple. Thank you. This question, can you slip back one slide, please? There? No. I'm looking for the slide that says no one. There we go. Okay. <coughs> There we go. There's a place to knowingly talk to being the report. Where's my